monster. Long ago, a monster named Nain lived in the mountains. Every year, around the time of the new year, he would go to the nearby village in China and eat all the food and livestock. People were scared of him. This continued for years. But one day, Nian saw a villager dressed in red clothes. The red clothes scared him and he ran down the hill screaming. The villager was so scared that he dropped his metal bucket. The bucket rolled down the hill, making a horrible noise. Frightened, Nian began to run faster. The villager told everyone about his amazing deed. Next year, when Nian arrived, they waved red banners and made loud noises with the rattles they had made. Nian was scared and ran away. He never returned. That is the reason why people in China believe that red color signifies luck. One rice meal for a thousand gold ingots. Long ago, there was a young boy named Han Zin. He was very poor and went to people's houses to beg for food. But soon the people were annoyed with him. So he tried his luck at fishing, but he could never catch anything. One day, an old woman who was washing clothes at the river saw him. She noticed his pale looks and felt sad for him. She fed him a bowl of rice every day. Han Zin felt guilty as he had nothing to give back to the old woman. One day, he said, I am going to find some way to repay you for your good deeds. The woman smiled and went away. After many years, Han Zin became the king of Chu province in China. He sent his soldiers to search for the old woman. One day, she came to the palace. Han Zin gave her a thousand gold ignorance, bars. From here comes the idiom, a meal of gold. It means to be grateful and repay those who have helped you. Out fishing, the last king of the Shang dynasty was a dictator, Jiang Shang. One of his ministers decided to leave the kingdom. He went away and settled in a quiet place near the Wei River in the kingdom of Duke Jishan. The duke was always on the lookout to hire talented people. Jiang Shan used to stretch his pole, let his hook at a distance from the surface of the water and sing. Those that are tired of living or those that are seeking their death, come up. The duke heard about his surprising way of fishing. He sent his soldiers to bring Jiang, but Jiang turned his back on them and said, What a bad luck, little shrimps jumping instead of a fish. The soldiers told this to the duke, who in turn sent his official to bring Jiang. But Jiang overlooked him and said, What a pity, only a small fish appears. Finally, the duke came and Jiang Shang agreed to join him. The Empty Pot The Emperor of China was growing old and had no son. He decided to hold a competition to choose his successor. So he invited all the boys of the kingdom and distributed flower seeds to them. He announced that whoever grew the best plant would be the next emperor. The boys hopefully took the seeds home and planted them in pots. One of the boys, Ping, was considered the best gardener. He tried his best to grow his seed, but nothing happened. The seeds of the other boys quickly sprouted and grew. Finally, the day came to show the flowers to the emperor. The emperor looked at the green plants with a frown on his face. He saw Ping's empty pot and smiled. The emperor declared him the new emperor of China. He said, the seeds I gave you all were cooked and thus could not grow. Ping was rewarded for his honesty. The Talking Bird Once a man had a pet talking bird. He loved traveling and had traveled all over the world. One day, he was far away from home and was left with no money. The bird understood the man's troubles and asked the man to sell it. Unwillingly, he took the bird to the palace. 
The prince was delighted to hear the bird talking. He gave the man 10 ounces of silver in return for the bird. The prince talked with the bird throughout the day. Now, it was my time to serve the food, the bird said. May I have a bath? The servants brought water in a golden bowl and opened the cage door. The bird splashed about in the bath and then perched on a tree. It kept talking to the prince. Suddenly, it said, Goodbye, I'm off, and the bird went back to the man. Who was the sinner? Long ago, ten farmers were crossing the field together. Suddenly, there was a heavy thunderstorm, and they had to take refuge in a half-ruined temple. While they thought they were safe inside, lightning flew around the temple in a continuous circle. The farmers were scared and thought that there must be a sinner among them whom the lightning would strike. To find out who he was, they decided to hang their straw hats above the door. Lightning struck one of the hats and blew it away. The nine farmers threw the unlucky owner of the hat out of the doors without mercy. But the moment he was thrown out of the temple, the lightning struck the temple. The one who was thrown out was the only with virtuous one among them, and for his sake, the lightning had spared the temple. So, the others had to pay for their stone-heartedness with their lives. The Race for the Chinese Zodiac Once, the Jade Emperor announced a race for the twelve places in the Chinese Zodiac. All the animals had to cross the river to win the race. The rat and the cat were best friends. They hatched a plan to ride the mite ox and win the race. They both climbed on the ox and joined the other animals in the race to cross the river. But the rat moved hastily and the cat fell down. The ox kept running in front, unaware of the rat on top. The rat jumped off when they had crossed the river to become the first animal of the zodiac. It was followed by the ox, the tiger, the rabbit, the dragon, the snake, the horse, the goat, the monkey, the rooster, the dog and the pig. The cat, however, reached too late and missed the race. That is why there is no zodiac named after the cat and the cat always hates the rat. Magic Pillow Once an old priest what was tired after a long journey and stopped at a wayside inn to rest. At the same time, a young farm laborer also arrived at the inn. He sat next to the priest and the two started laughing and talking. The young man looked at his dress and said with a sigh, See, what a miserable wretch I am. You seem to be well fed and healthy, so why do you suddenly complain of being a miserable wretch?" replied the priest. I work hard every day. I want to be like a great general and win battles or be a rich man, but I am a poor farm laborer. When he began to get sleepy, the priest took a pillow out of his bag and said to him, Lay your head on this and all your wishes will come true. The pillow was made of porcelain. It was in the shape of a tube. It opened at each end. A great man. The farm laborer put his head on the pillow. One of the openings of the pillow was so large and bright that he went in and was soon in his own home. He married a beautiful girl and soon became a rich man. Next year, he passed his examination and was made a magistrate, and after a few years, he became the Prime Minister. One day, he was accused of treachery and sentenced to death. He made to kneel down, and the executioner approached with his sword. He was too scared and immediately opened his eyes. He found himself back at the inn. He saw the priest resting. He bowed to the priest and said, I thank you, sir. For the lesson you have taught me. Now I understand what it means to be a great man. He left and went back to his work. 
the football players. The two Chais, father and son, were famous all around as the best football players. Unfortunately, the father met a sad end and got drowned in the great lake nearby. After eight years, the young Chai went on a long journey across the same lake. It was evening and he decided to anchor his boat for the night. It was a lovely moonlit night. Suddenly, the young Chai saw five men coming out of the lake. They were carrying a huge mat which they spread on top of the water. Then they brought up bowls of food and wine in kettles. The three rich men spread the food on the mat and sat down to eat. The two servants stood in waiting. The rich men were grandly dressed with big black turbans. The servants wore black robes. To the young child, the older servant resembled his father. Football on the Lake After eating, the three rich men decided to have a game of football. The next moment, the young child saw the young servant dive into the water and come up in a moment with a monster sparkling ball. The ball was quite large and it glittered so much that the young child's eyes were dazzled. The three men and the older servant came and joined the game. When the game had become thrilling, down the ball fell into the middle of young Chai's boat. Instantly, the young Chai kicked it as hard as he could. The ball was feather light and as soft as rice paper. Chai's foot went right through it. Still, the ball went up into the sky and multicolored light steamed from the hole he had made in the ball with his foot. At last, down it fell like a comet, touched the water, fizzed and then went out. Ho ho! cried the players in a fury. Well kicked, said the old servant. Young Chai meets his father. The rich men ordered the servants to bring the young Chai to them as he had spoiled the game. The two servants reached the young Chai's boat where he was standing with a sword in his hand. Father and the son recognized each other. Young Chai called out, Father, Father, look at me, I am your son, Young Chai. In the meanwhile, the rich men also jumped into the young Chai's boat. They pounced upon the older man and were about to carry him off. When the young Chai wheeled round with a sword, he had untied his boat from the moorings. The young Chai cut off one man's arm and chopped off another man's head. His body fell into the water. Scared, the third man ran away. Feeling safe, Chai and his father made haste to get the boat away. They escaped. Suddenly, a great mouth opened in the lake. It was a lake monster trying to swallow the boat. The young Chai seized two huge round stones which were kept to use as anchors and threw them into the huge mouth which at once shut upon it. Now, they sailed along and Chai's father told him his story. I was never drowned, he said. All the men with me were eaten by the fish goblins when our boat got lost. I was spared because I could play football. Do you know what that football was made of? The one you broke? It was a part of a fish. Look at that arm you cut off. It is a fish's fin. And the men you saw playing with me? are the fish goblins who serve the dragon king. He asked the young Chai to quickly get away from the place before the dragon king could catch them. The Magic Paintbrush Once a poor boy named Ma Liang lived in a small village in China. He wanted to be an artist and drew pictures everywhere. One night, he dreamt that an old man gave him a magic paintbrush to help poor people. In the morning, when he woke up, he found the magic paintbrush on his desk. From that day on, he used the paintbrush to help people. When people had no water to use in the fields, he drew a river and the river came to life. One day, he drew some rice for the hungry man. A few days later, a rich man heard about Ma Liang. He was very greedy and planned to steal the paintbrush from the young boy. 
he ordered his guards to imprison Ma Liang. He took the magic paintbrush and felt very happy. The Greedy Rich Man The greedy man drew many pictures, but they did not become real. Angrily, he said to Ma Liang, If you draw some pictures for me and turn them to life, I will set you free. Ma Liang got an idea. He agreed to the idea of the rich man. The rich man said, Draw me a golden mountain. Ma Liang drew a sea first. Then he drew a golden mountain far away from the sea. The rich man got angry and said, Draw a big ship quickly to reach the mountain. Ma Liang smiled quietly and drew a big ship. The rich man jumped into the ship. When the ship sailed to the middle of the sea, Ma Liang drew a large wave that destroyed the ship. The ship wrecked and the rich man never came back. Ma Liang went back to the village and went on painting for poor people. Blessing or Misfortune Once a man lived near the northern borders of China. He was well experienced in the practices of Tao Sin. One day his horse ran into the territory of the northern tribes. Maybe this will turn out to be a blessing, said his father. A few months later, the horse came back. A fine horse from the north came running behind him. Maybe this will turn out to be a cause of misfortune, said his father. One day, the man while riding the horse fell down. Unfortunately, he broke his thigh bone. Maybe this will turn out to be a blessing, alleged his father. After a year, the northern tribe started to invade the border regions. All the young macho men took up arms to fight. Most of them died in the war. The man was crippled and was unable to join the battle. So, both the man and his father survived. Ask a fox for its skin Li Sheng, a young man, had just married a beautiful woman. One day, she thought that a coat of fox fur would look attractive on her. So, she asked Li Sheng to get her a coat of fox fur. But the coat was rare and costly. The husband felt helpless and went on the hillside in search of a fox. Soon he saw a fox with a dazzling coat. Immediately, he caught the fox by its tail. Delighted, he said to the fox, My wife wants a coat of fox fur. Can you give me your skin so that she may have fur? That isn't a big deal, is it? The fox was shocked and quickly thought of an idea to save its life. Well, dear friend, that's easy. You have to let my tail go so that I may pull off the skin for you. The elated man released the fox. The fox ran away as fast as it could into the forest. Kua Fu chased the sun. Long ago, Kua Fu, the bravest and the fastest giant, lived on the mountain called Heaven Pillar. He could cover hundreds of miles in a single step. One day, he took a tree and began to race after the sun. He chased the sun to the Yu Valley when he felt thirsty and tired to continue. Where could he find some water? With a single stride, he reached the Yellow River and drank the whole river. But it was not enough. He drained the Wai River and marched towards the north for the lakes. At last, he collapsed and the deafening sound rolled everywhere. The tree he was carrying fell and grew into a peach tree grove. Today that forest is called Donglin Forest, a beautiful green forest with sweet peaches. From here comes the idiom Kua Fu chase the sun, which becomes the troop of man's determination and volition against nature. Fish for the moon in the well One day, Hao Jia, the witty man, went to a well to fetch some water. When he peeped into the well, he saw the moon's reflection and thought that the moon had sunk in the well. Oh, good heavens, what a pity! The shining moon has dropped into the well. He rushed home for a hook and tied it with rope of his bucket. He threw the bucket into the well to fish for the moon. After a while, Haujia was delighted as the hook caught something. Actually, the hook caught on a rock. He quickly started pulling the rope. He pulled it so hard that the rope broke and Haujia fell flat on his back. Lying on the floor, he saw the moon again, high in the sky. 
He felt relieved and happy. Aha! It finally came back to its place. What a great job! He felt proud of himself and told everyone he met about his wonderful deed without knowing that what he did was actually unrealistic. The Lucius Pears In ancient China, a farmer went to the market to sell loads of Lucius Pears. He set up his barrow and soon the crowd assembled. A poor, hungry, ragged-looking priest approached him and humbly asked for one pear. The farmer refused. The priest kept insisting. A man in the crowd came forward and asked the farmer to give the priest a rotten pear. But the farmer refused and all the people close by began shouting. Then the constable of the market took out some cash out of his purse, bought a pear and gave it to the priest. The priest thanked the constable, bowed and told the people that he needed the pear not for himself but for growing. He ate up the pear leaving a single pip. He dug a hole in the ground and planted it. The priest gently covered it with the soil. The Wonderful Pear Tree Then he asked for some water. A man in the crowd handed him and he poured it on the soil. Immediately, the people saw green leaves sprouting from the soil. The people were shocked. Soon there was a small pear tree with branches and leaves. It continued to grow. There was complete silence as the tree burst into flowers and the flowers turned into large sweet pears. Happily, the priest took the pears and handed them to each person. Then he took his axe and cut down the pear tree. He put the tree over his shoulder and went away. The farmer watched it in amazement. When he turned back, his barrow was empty. Even one of its handles were missing. Then the farmer knew what had happened. The priest had used his pears to create the wonderful pear tree. The pear tree which the priest took away was found a little further down the road. It was the missing handle of the barrow. Learning Magic Long ago, a man named Sung longed to be a magician. So one day, he went to a temple. He saw a priest with long hair sitting on a rush mat. He bowed and asked the priest if he could teach him magic. I guess you are not strong enough for that, replied the priest. Sung begged to the priest to let him try. The priest allowed him to stay in the temple and join with the other pupils. Early next morning, the priest sent for him. The priest gave him a hatchet and asked him to go out and cut firewood. He did this every day for a month. At last, his hands and feet were so sore that he secretly began to wish to go back home. One evening, when he returned from the day's work, he found two strangers drinking wine with the priest. The Magic of Paper It was dark, but no candles had been brought in yet. So, the priest took a pair of scissors and cut out a round piece of paper and stuck it upon the wall. At once, it became bright as the moon and lighted up the whole room. One of the strangers took a kettle of wine and told the pupils to help themselves. Sung wondered how they would all drink out of such a small kettle. But he was astonished to see that not only everybody had his fill, but also the wine was left in the kettle. Now we must bid you good night, as we are going to drink a glass of wine in the palace of the moon," said one of the strangers. Then they walked into the moon, where they could be seen talking and drinking together. The Priest Gradually the moon began to fade. When the pupils brought lighted candles, they saw the priest sitting alone in the dark, with a piece of paper on the wall. The priest now asked them to sleep so that they might get up early in the morning to collect firewood. Sung could not stand this any longer. He went to the priest and said, For the three months, I have been here doing nothing but chopping firewood. Now I want to go back home. I told you that you were not strong enough. You can go home tomorrow, said the priest. Sung asked the priest to teach him at least some little tricks so that he might not regret having come a long way for nothing. What trick would you like to learn? asked the priest. Well, replied Sung, I want to walk through the walls as you walk through them. Sung's Magic The priest laughed and told him to say, Hobbery jibbery snobbery snoo, 
while walking through the wall, Sung walked up to the wall but couldn't walk through. So the priest said, Don't go slowly, put your head down and run fast. Sung did as he was told and immediately found himself outside the temple. Overjoyed, he went in to thank the priest. The priest told him to be careful and not to show off too much. When Sung reached home, he bragged about his magic, but no one believed him. In order to prove himself, he put his head down and rushed at a wall, but he only hit the bricks very hard and was knocked down flat on the ground. Now he had a bump on his forehead as big as an egg. People burst out laughing. The Magic Cask Once upon a time, a poor man dug up a big cask in his field. He took it home and asked his wife to clean it. But when she started brushing the inside of the cask, all of a sudden the cask began to fill itself with brushes. She kept taking out the brushes but the others kept on taking their place. The man sold the brushes and lived comfortably. One day, by mistake, a coin fell into the cask. Suddenly, the brushes disappeared and the cask began to fill with money. They became rich. Now the man asked his grandfather to keep taking out the money from the cask. As the old man was weak, one day he fell into the cask and died. Immediately the money disappeared and the cask was filled with dead grandfathers. The man had to take all of them out. All his money was spent in burying the dead grandfathers. Finally the cask broke. Now he was as poor as before. An Ancient Man Huang An was an old man who was over 80 but still looked like a youth. Even during the winter, he went about without garments. He sat on a three feet long tortoise. Once a man asked him, how old might this tortoise be? Huang An replied, when Fu He first invented fishnets and eel pots, he caught and gave this tortoise to me. From then on, I have worn its shield quite flat sitting on it. The tortoise is afraid of the light of the sun and the moon, so it sticks its head out of its shell only once in 2000 years. But from the time it is with me, it has already stuck its head out five times. Seeing this, Huang An took the tortoise and walked on, and the legend had that Huang An was 10,000 years old. The Emperor and the Nightingale Long ago, the emperor in China had a very beautiful kingdom. Everyone admired his palace and gardens. One day, the emperor heard a nightingale sing beautifully and ordered his courtiers to search for the nightingale to bring it to the palace. The emperor kept the bird in his palace in a cage and daily heard her melodious song. One day, the king of Japan sent him a beautiful artificial nightingale covered with the precious gems. It too sang wonderfully. Everyone started praising it and forgot the real nightingale. Upset, the real nightingale flew away. One day, it so happened that the spring of the artificial nightingale broke and it could not sing. Years passed by. The emperor fell ill and was near death. No doctor could cure him. The real nightingale heard this and one night came to the emperor's chamber to sing for him. Hearing the bird sing, the emperor recovered. The bird promised that it would always come and sing for him. The Seagull and Kindness Once, there was a rich and powerful man. He loved seagulls and they also loved him. One day, he was shocked to see a seagull on his terrace. He ran over to look at it. He was shocked to see that it was wounded. He carefully took the seagull in his arms and called for a doctor. It was not a deep wound, so the seagull quickly recovered. The man asked his servants to prepare the best foods for it, pheasant, exotic meats and delicious fruits. Shockingly, the seagull did not eat anything. The man tried his best to make it eat the food, but it simply didn't. Days passed and the seagull died. The Chinese fable teaches us that how sometimes love isn't really love, but is selfishness. The rich man thought that the seagull would like to eat the same food that he liked instead of finding out what seagull loved. He focused on himself only. The Shadow Puppets 
Long ago in ancient China, an emperor had a beautiful wife who told fabulous stories. The emperor loved stories dearly. Sadly, one day the emperor's wife fell ill and died. The emperor became very sad and lost all interest in the affairs of the kingdom. Everyone in the kingdom was worried. They were afraid that the warring clan might hear about the emperor's weakness and attack the city. Something needed to be done soon. One day, a priest passed some children playing with their dolls. They were making dancing shadows on the wall of the city. The priest got an idea. He knew the stories of the emperor's wives used to tell. He thought to bring those stories to life. He made a puppet out of the bits of clay. He painted it to look somewhat like the emperor's wife. The puppet show. The priest now quickly went into the emperor's garden. He carried along with him his puppet, a candle, and a curtain. He placed the curtain near the emperor's chair. Then he hid behind the curtain with the candle and the puppet. He waited for the emperor to come. When the emperor came, he did not notice the curtain. His eyes fell on the dancing shadow. The priest moved the puppet behind the curtain and told wonderful stories of the emperor's wife. The priest told the emperor's favorite story. The emperor was spellbound. He knew the priest was there. He knew the puppet was there, but it appeared to him as if his wife was telling the story. The emperor was no longer sad. At the end of each busy day, he went into his garden eager to look at the shadow of his wife and hear her stories once again. That was the beginning of the shadow puppets. Theft of a Duck Chang, an old farmer, had a large flock of ducks. Once his neighbor Lin stole one of the ducks from Chang's farm and ate it for supper. At midnight, Something strange happened. He began to itch all over and feathers started growing on his skin. The next day, Lin was in great pain. At night, a man appeared in his dream and said, You stole a duck. That's why you are being punished. You will be cured only if you make Chang say, You dirty thief. Lin went to meet Chang and confessed his theft of a duck. He requested Chang to say, You dirty thief. But Chang refused to say so. Lin then opened his shirt and showed Chang the feathers grown all over his body. Chang felt sorry for him. Sympathetically, he said, You dirty thief. Immediately, Lin's feather disappeared. He promised never to steal again. The Donkey of Gizu In ancient times, there were no donkeys in Gizu. One day, a local man brought a donkey and set it loose at the foot of the mountain. A tiger saw this strange animal with long legs, large ears, black hair and big eyes. He thought it must be a divine animal. So the tiger hid between the bushes and occasionally peeped at the donkey. After a few days, the tiger decided to have a close look at the interloper. But suddenly the donkey brayed and the tiger ran away as fast as he could. After a while, he watched the donkey carefully and observed that though it had a huge body, it had no special ability. The tiger gradually became used to its brain and was no longer so afraid. One day, he walked in front of the donkey. The donkey was too enraged that he kicked the tiger. The gleeful tiger pounced upon the donkey with a loud roar and ate it up. The Magic Brocade Long ago, a widow with her three sons lived in a small village in China. She was famous for her brocades. One day, she went to the market to sell her brocades. At a stall, she saw a beautiful picture of a pretty white house surrounded by green fields. The widow loved the painting and bought it. She went home and showed the painting to her sons. I wish we lived in such a place, she sighed. The eldest sons laughed while the youngest one encouraged her to weave the design into her brocade. Weave the image into brocade and it will be as good as living there. She started working on the brocade and her sons chopped wood for living. The widow burned pine branches to work at night. The smoke caused tears to fall from her eyes and she wove the drops into the brocade. 
the old woman. Years passed by. She kept weeping and weaving a beautiful brocade. At the end of the third year, the widow finished her brocade. It was beautiful and the widow was proud of it. Suddenly, a strong wind blew the house and the brocade flew away. It flew further and further until it had completely vanished. The widow was heartbroken. She asked the eldest son to search for it and he set out immediately. After a month, he met an old woman who was sitting beside a small stone house with a white stone horse. He told her the story of his mother's lost brocade. She said, the brocade has been carried away by fairies. You must pass through the flame mountain and then cross an icy sea without complaint. Or you can take this box of gold and go back home. The eldest son took the box of gold. But instead of going home, he went to live his life alone. The Land of Fairies Back home when the eldest son did not return, the dying widow sent her second son to find the brocade. When he reached the mountain pass, he too found the old woman. She told him the story and like his brother, he also took the box of gold and headed to the city alone. Another month passed away and the second son also did not return. Now the youngest son set off to look for the brocade. When the old woman told him the story, he immediately agreed for the journey. The old woman turned the white stone horse into a real one. Next, he and the horse galloped towards east. The youngest son went through the flame mountain and crossed the icy sea and reached the land of fairies. There, he found fairies weaving copies of his mother's brocade. He asked them to return his mother's brocade. Tonight we will finish and you may take your mother's brocade, they said. The fairies fed him and let him rest. The Fairy and the Brocade In the middle of the night, one of the fairies got up and looked at the brocade. She loved his mother's brocade so much that she wanted to be a part of it. So she embroidered a picture of herself in the widow's brocade. In the morning, the youngest son took the brocade and rode off back home. The widow was happy to have her brocade back and she immediately healed. Together they carried the brocade outside and unrolled it. The picture sprang to life. The youngest son and the fairy fell in love and got married. They had a new home to live in. Then one day the two eldest sons who had become beggars came upon a lovely white house. When they got to know that it was their mother's, they turned away in shame. How the Rooster Got His Crown It was believed that in earlier times there were nine suns in the sky. When there were no rains, the suns began to roast the earth. The people had to live in caves and could not come out during the day. All the wise people gathered to discuss the problem. An adept archer named Yi was called from a remote land. He used his archery techniques and shot the suns, reflections in the pond. Out of nine, eight suns dropped down. Only one survived. Yi was so scared that he hid in a cave and never came out. The earth turned dark. People made all the efforts to persuade the sun. But the sun did not come out. At last, the lowly rooster began singing. The sun was enthralled by the song and appeared. The sun heard the people cheering, enjoyed it and then returned to the heavens. People rewarded the rooster with a crown for his outstanding achievement in saving the earth. Yi Shen Yi Shen's life changed after the death of her father. Her stepmother and stepsister treated her badly. Yi Shen's only friend was a beautiful fish with golden eyes. Her stepmother could not see her happy and one day she cooked the fish for dinner. A sad Yi Shen took the fish bones and kept them in a little jar. One day her stepmother and stepsister went for the spring festival. Alone Yi Shen talked to the fish bones and expressed her desire to go to the festival. Suddenly. A beautiful gown and tiny golden slippers appeared out of the jar. Yi Shen looked beautiful and grabbed all the attention at the festival. After the party, she ran and one of her golden slippers fell. The tiny golden slipper was passed on to the king. He sent people to search for the owner of the tiny golden slipper and finally found Yi Shen. The king was fascinated by her beauty and married her.
valiant Shu Lang. Shu Lang was a brave girl. She was given military training by her father, a Chinese general. One day, Russia declared war on China. Shu Lang asked her father for the permission to go to the war. The general hesitated at first but then agreed. Shu Lang dressed up as a man and set off for the capital. On the way, Shu Lang, who named herself Ming, met a young man. His name was Chang and he also wanted to join the army. They became good friends. After two days, they reached the capital and underwent training. A week later, they were sent to the war front. Shu Lang fought like a raging tigress. Her bravery stunned the Russians as well as the Chinese. The war went on for many days. None knew that Shu Lang was a girl, not even her best friend, Chang. Lang and Chang One day, the king called for Shu Lang and made her the leader. The Chinese put up a brave fight under Shu Lang's leadership. One day, Shu Lang heard that the Russians were planning to attack at night. She assembled all the soldiers and ordered them to position themselves on the rooftop. At night, the Russians thought that the army would be sleeping and they attacked. But the Russians were in for a surprise. A fierce battle followed. The Russians were defeated and China won. After the victory celebration, Chang said, Now the war is over. I will look for a good wife. Won't you look for one too? No, I won't. I think I need a bright groom, replied Shu Lang. Everyone was surprised at the discovery, even the king. Yes, Shu Lang, you have made us proud. I don't need to search for a bride. You are the one for me, said Chang. The Greedy Man In the kingdom of Qi lived a poor man who had just enough to survive, but he had an unquenchable thirst for gold. The idea of getting gold always fascinated him. He was well aware that a number of merchants set up beautiful gold figures in their market stalls. He devised a plan to steal one of the figures. So one day, he put on his best clothes and went to the market. He moved around and pretended to observe the gold figures. Swiftly, he took one of the figures and fled. But he was quickly caught. The guards asked him why he stole during the day when there were thousands of witnesses around him. The man said, I did not notice anyone. I just thought of getting the gold figures. That is it. The greed for gold made him blind. A painted snake makes a man sick. Li Guang was very friendly. One day, he invited one of his friends to his home. Li Guang realized that something was wrong with his friend and so he asked him what the matter was. It is all because of banquet held at your home. You proposed a toast to me and when we raised the glasses, I saw a little snake lying in the wine. Since then, I am feeling sick. Li Guang was baffled. He looked around and noticed a bow with a painted snake hung on the wall. Now, Li Guang asked his friend to raise the toast again and pointed to the shade of the bow in the glass. That is the snake I saw last time, said the friend. Li Guang laughed and took off the bow on the wall. Can you see it now? he asked. His friend was surprised as there was no snake. He recovered from his sickness and decided never to be too suspicious. The Fire God Long ago in a certain village lived a rich man. One day he got into his wagon and set out on a long journey. On the way he met a girl dressed in red clothes. The girl requested him to take her along. The rich man agreed and she got into the wagon. He drove along for half a day without even glancing at her. Finally, when the girl was about to get down from the wagon, she said, You are a good and honest man. I will tell you the truth. I am the god of fire. A fire will break out in your house tomorrow. So save what you can. Terrified, the rich man hastily ran home. He collected all his valuable possessions, clothes and jewels and moved them away from the house. The moment he lay down to sleep, a fire broke out on the hearth. Soon, the entire building collapsed into dust and ashes. He thanked the fire god as he had saved all his possessions. The White Ants Ho Kuan was such a kind-hearted man that he had never killed any living being. 
he had kept a thousand pieces of silver in a jar. One day, it so happened that the white ants made their way into the jar and ate some of the silver. The member of Ho family traced the ants to a hollow cave. They decided to put the ants in a melting pot and recover the lost silver. But Ho was so kind that he did not let them kill the ants. At night, he dreamt that thousands of soldiers dressed in white took him to the king. The king said to Ho Kwan, By your kind act, our lives have been saved. The tree near your residence has a jar full of silver buried under it. Just dig that out and keep it for yourself. You are the perfect example of goodness. When Ho awoke, he dug up under the tree and recovered a jar with a thousand silver coins. The Fisherman Shia Wu Dong was a kind-hearted fisherman. One day he caught a very big fish. Don't kill me. If you release me, I will surely help you when you are in trouble, said the fish. Jia Wun Dong let the fish go. On his way back, he saw a python climbing up the rock to feast on some eaglets. Stop or I'll kill you, shouted Jia Wu Dong. The python escaped into the bushes. The eagle was far away but saw the incident. It came down and thanked Jia Wu Dong. If fortune ever frowns upon you, come here and call me. I'll be glad to help you. Going forward, he saw a hunter aiming at the jackal. Jia Wu Dong made a loud noise. The hunter missed his aim. I am indebted to you, my rescuer. If you ever need my help, come back here and call out for me, said the jackal to Jia Wu Dong. He walked on. The test. Soon, Jia Wu Dong came to a beautiful town. He saw a man being thrown into the dungeon because he could not pass the prince's test. He found out that the princess was looking for a suitable match. Anyone wishing to marry the princess had to hide in some place where she couldn't find him, and she had a magic mirror that showed where the man was hiding. Jia Wu Dong could not resist the challenge, and soon, Jia Wudong was in the palace courtyard. Lead me to the princess. I have come to seek her hand, he announced in the court. Do you know the test? asked the princess. Yes, and I am ready for it, Jia Wudong replied. It was decided that the princess would look in the mirror next day at dawn. Jia Wudong had all night to hide himself. He went to the big fish to seek help. She asked Jia Wudong to hide in her belly. The Magic Mirror The next day at dawn, the princess looked into the mirror. She could not find Jia Wudong. Then she ordered the mirror to look into the lakes and oceans. I see him. There he is, in a belly of a big fish. Have him arrested and brought to the palace, said the princess. Though Jia Wudong's attempt was a failure, yet the princess gave him a second chance. Jia Wudong thought of seeking the eagle's help this time. The next day, the magic mirror could not find him on land or water. The princess ordered the mirror to take a look at the sky. There he was, riding on the back of an eagle. He's failed again. But the princess said, you have failed in your second attempt too. I'll give you the last and final chance. It's the dungeon for you if you fail. The Tunnel Jia Wudong went to seek the jackal's help this time. The jackal took Jia Wudong along with him in a long tunnel. After walking for many hours, they reached the end of the tunnel. The next morning, the princess could not locate Jia Wudong in a magic mirror. My magic mirror has never failed me. I will find him, thought the princess. The princess looked for Jia Wudong all day but finally had to give up. That evening, Jia Wudong came to the court and asked the princess, your Highness, I have won, haven't I? Yes, but where were you hiding? asked the princess. Jia Wudong replied, Right under the dais you are standing on. I knew you wouldn't think of looking for me there. But how did you get there? asked the princess. Jia Wudong answered, Through an underground tunnel, Your Highness. The princess was impressed, and so Jia Wudong and the princess were married amid great pomp and splendor. Mulan Long ago in China lived a girl named Mulan. 
Her father was a retired general and had come home sick. One day, the emperor sent his officials to announce that the war was imminent. By order of the emperor, one man from every family must serve in the imperial army. Mulan knew that her father would never survive another battle. He was sick and old. She did not have a brother. There was only Mulan who could take her father's place. But women were not allowed in the battlefield. She was sad. She came up with a plan to save her father's life. The next morning, Mulan quietly sneaked into her parents' bedroom. She took her father's sword and armor and cut her long, beautiful hair. Mulan disguised herself as a man. She put on her father's uniform and left the house. Mulan the hero. Mulan looked like a young soldier going to war. The warriors accepted him, for this was her plan to pretend to be a boy and take her father's place in the army. When Mulan's parents discovered what she had done, they were shocked. Masquerading as a soldier was a crime, and if Mulan were caught, she would be killed. But she was a brave soldier. On the battlefield, she saved the life of the emperor. The emperor praised her and said Mulan had saved China. Nobody could recognize her. They thought she was the man. She fought bravely but was injured. When the doctors treated her, it was revealed that she was a woman. Finally, everybody got to know that she was Mulan. Mulan brought honor to her family and made her father proud. She was a hero in China. The Melon and the Professor Once, Wu Kaio, a Chinese professor, sat in the shade of a tree in his garden. His eyes fell on a watermelon lying on the ground, covered with its green leaves. Then he saw the figure tree with many figs on it. He said to himself, I think the big melon should grow on this big tree. This tree is so strong, it can easily bear the burden of large fruits like the watermelon. He then looked at the vine and said, You are so thin and small, you should bear small fruit like the fig. I think mistakes are made in creation. At that very moment, a fig dropped from the tree on his nose. He was a little hurt. He shook his head and said, I was so wrong. If the fig tree bore a large fruit like the watermelon, and if it dropped on my nose, I would have been killed. It can be a dangerous for people. Lose the axe, suspect the neighbor. Once, a man lost his axe. He searched for it all over but could not find it. He suspected that it had been stolen by his neighbor's son. He began observing the child's expressions, words and actions and thought the child was a thief. Thus, he concluded that the neighbor's son stole it. He said, I always thought that the boy was no good. On the second day, he went up the mountain to chop firewood. There behind the tree, he found his lost axe. Now, he finally remembered that he had only forgotten his axe while resting under the tree. He regretted suspecting his neighbor's son. When he returned home, he took another look at the child's behavior, words and actions. Nothing seemed to suggest that he was the thief. After this, Chinese people started using the phrase, lose the axe and suspect the neighbor, to describe careless suspicions. The Great Discovery Ming lived in a village with his wife, Lin, one day. They were working in the fields. Suddenly, Lin saw a phoenix bird there. It is a very lucky bird. My mother once told me that there is always a great treasure where the phoenix alights, said Lin. Both of them reached the spot, but the phoenix flew away. Ming dug the spot, but there was no treasure, only shining white powder looking like sand. It looks precious and rare. Ming, you must make it to the king, said Lin. Ming filled a sack with the treasure and set off. He reached the king's palace after a long journey. He showed the treasure to the king. The king became angry. Before Ming could tell the king about the phoenix, he ordered the guards to throw Ming and the sack out. Discovery of Salt Ming was thrown into the dungeon. A guard was carrying Ming's sack out. He found the sack heavy and left it near the kitchen. 
After a few days, while the cook was carrying dumplings to the king, he fell over the sack. A little sand fell onto the dumplings. Since he was in a hurry, he picked up those dumplings and served the king. A little later, the king called out for the cook. The king sternly asked, What have you put in the mushrooms? Quaking with fear, the cook confessed about the sand. And then to everybody's surprise, the king said, I love the mushroom dumplings. I want all the cooks to use that special sand in whatever they cook. Free the man who brought it to me. I will reward him richly. He will also supply me with more of the magical sand. The treasure was salt. The Miser and the Tiger An old woodcutter went to the mountain every day to cut wood. He was a miser who amazed his silver until it changed to gold. For him, the gold was the most important thing in the world. One day, a tiger sprang at him and carried him off in its mouth. The woodcutter's son saw his father in danger. He quickly picked up a long knife and rushed to save him. The old woodcutter saw his son about to stab the tiger. He called out to him and said, Don't spoil the tiger's skin. Kill the tiger without cutting holes in its skin. We can get many pieces of silver by selling it. The son got distracted and started listening to his father's instructions. Suddenly, the tiger dashed off into the forest, carrying the old man. The tiger killed the miser and the son could never find his father. The Two Melons A poor old woman was washing clothes at a pool when a wounded bird fell before her. She took care for it till it got well. The bird put an oval seed before her and went away. The woman planted the seed and a melon plant grew out of it. When the melon became ripe, she cut it in two. She found it full of silver and gold pieces. She became rich and led a comfortable life. One of her neighbors found out how the old woman had suddenly become rich. She also went to the pool and hit a bird. She then took care of it until its wing healed. The bird laid a seed before her and flew away. The woman quickly planted the seed and a melon tree grew out of it. When the melon was ripe, she cut it into two. A group of hungry beggars came out. Now she had to feed them all. Meng Jian Long ago, at the time of China's first emperor, a young lady named Meng Jiang was married to a handsome young man who lived in her neighborhood. Soon, the government officials announced that the young men in the village had to leave home to build the Great Wall. So Meng Jiang's husband left home to build the wall. Meng Jiang knew how dangerous it was to build the Great Wall. She prayed for her husband every day. Weeks turned into months and months into years, but Meng Jiang heard nothing from her husband and she missed him badly. One night, she dreamt of her husband. In the dream, she saw that her husband looked gaunt and he shivered dreadfully in the cold wind. He called out to his wife for help. So next morning, Meng Jiang decided to travel to the construction site of the Great Wall to meet her husband and give him some warm clothes. Meng Jiang weeps. Meng Jiang decided to go and meet her husband, taking a new coat she had made for him. For months, she travelled on the rocky paths and over the mountains and reached the Great Wall. There, she began to look for her husband. As she walked along the wall, Meng Jiang asked everyone about her husband, but no one knew about him. Finally, she found a group of workers from her village. When she asked them about her husband, they told her that he had died. But where's his body or bones? None could tell her exactly where it was. Someone said her husband and several other laborers had been buried in the wall after they died. Hearing that, Meng Jiang was so heartbroken that she went into a trance. When she gained consciousness, she began to weep at the foot of the Great Wall. Tears that crumbled the Great Wall Meng Jiang wept continuously for three days and three nights at the foot of the Great Wall. Finally, her tears dried up. Even the heavens was moved by her tears. 
all of a sudden something miraculous happened. A part of the wall as long as 800 miles broke loose and collapsed with a loud noise. It revealed innumerable white bones, including those of her husbands in the middle of the debris of dirt and stones. But still, she couldn't identify which bones were her husbands, so she bit her fingers and dropped her blood onto the bones there. She prayed that her blood would infuse into the body of it was her husband's body, otherwise it would flow away. In this way, Lady Meng Jiang finally found the remains of her husband. Meng Jiang and the Emperor The collapse and the thunderous noise of the Great Wall disturbed King Shi Huang, the Emperor. The Emperor came and saw Meng Jiang. At first, he was furious, but he was fascinated by her beauty. So instead of punishing her, he took her to be his mistress. Meng Jiang agreed to marry the Emperor on three conditions. First, the Emperor should arrange a grand funeral for her husband and bury him properly. Second, her late husband should be given a posthumous title of a high official. Third, a high platform should be built on the sea near the Great Wall, where she could make a sacrificial offering to her husband. Unwillingly, the Emperor granted the widow's three requests. But when Meng Jiang got her third wish and stood at the top of the platform, she began to scold the emperor for his tyranny. Then she jumped into the sea. The Winemaker Du Kang had been making wine for the last 21 years without a break. He decided to take a break and left home to visit his friends and relatives. After he had left, the emperor summoned Du Kang to his cook to make wine. Since Du Kang was not there, they took his 14-year-old son Yuma along. His mother gave him some grapes and grain to take along. She told him that his father used to make wine. They travelled for five days till they reached the celestial city of the emperor. Yuma was brought before the emperor, but he ordered the guards to throw him outside the great wall. He wanted the master wine maker, not a child. Poor Yuma, he was all alone in a strange land. He wandered from city to city doing small jobs for people. The Forgotten Vat After a few months, Yuma was back outside the celestial city. Yuma had earned enough to rent a tiny room outside the celestial city. He had been carrying the grain that his mother gave him. One day, he put the grain in a vat and added water. Then he covered it and forgot about it. Almost two weeks later, Yuma opened the vat looking for water. It had lovely smell and taste. He put a little of these on the noodles. It had improved the taste. Yuma's liquid was found to cure even illness. One day, the emperor felt dangerously ill. A fish bone was stuck in his throat. Yuma reached the palace and asked the emperor to pour the liquid into his mouth. The fish bone softened and the physician pulled it out easily. The emperor thanked Yuma for his help. Yuma reminded the emperor of his father. The emperor pardoned Yuma and gave his vinegar, the liquid, a special place on his table. The Jewel in the Rock Once upon a time, P and Ho found a piece of rock that contained jade inside. He offered the rock to King Li. The king got it examined and found that it was just a stone. The king thought that Pien Ho tried to deceive him and ordered to cut off his left foot. Meanwhile, King Li passed away and King Wu came to the throne. Now, Pien showed his rock to King Wu. King Wu also got it inspected and found it no good. Now, the king ordered that his right foot be cut off. Pien Ho cried and cried till the blood appeared in place of tears. The king asked, Why do you weep so badly? Pien Ho said, I lament because a precious jewel is declared to be a mere stone and an honest man is called a deceiver. The king next asked the jeweler to cut and polish the rock. He discovered a precious jewel inside it. It was named after Pien Ho. The Delighted Student 
One day, the Zhang Liang, a student, saw an old man sitting on the bridge with one of his shoes on the ground. Politely, he put the shoe on the foot of the old man. Pleased with the boy's gesture, the old man asked him to come to the bridge very early next morning. I will tell you something that affects your whole life. The next morning, when the Zhang Liang reached the bridge, the old man was already there, and the Zhang Liang had to listen to a lecture on his lazy habits. The old man asked him to come again the next morning. This time he went at dawn, but still the old man was there and the boy was reprimanded strictly. He was told to come again on the third morning. This time the Zhang Liang went to the bridge right after his supper. When the old man came at dawn, he was delighted to find the Zhang there ahead of time. He gave the Zhang education on values. As a result, the Zhang grew up to be a general. Yu Gong moves away mountains. Yu Gong, a 90-year-old man, lived at the north of two high mountains. The mountains blocked the way, making it inconvenient for him and his family. One day, he called the members of his family and said, "The two mountains are blocking our way. Let's move them away." His children and grandchildren all agreed except his wife. So next day, Yu Gong, his sons, and his grandsons started to break up rocks and remove the earth. The neighbors also joined in. A wise old man, Zi Su, saw them and said to Yu Gong, "How long do you think you can live on? Rest your old bones rather than working so hard." Yu Gong sighed and said, "It is true that I am on the edge of the grave." But I have sons, and my sons have their sons. I am doing it for them. Moved by Yu Gong's resolve, God in heaven sent two immortal creatures to take the two mountains away. Silver troubles. Zhang San had saved three hundred ounces of silver. It gave him happiness as well as anxiety. He racked his brains to find a safe place in order to hide his silver. He looked around, but no place looked safe. After a few days, an idea struck his mind. At night, he dug a hole at the base of the wall in his back room. He then buried his treasure there. To make it safer, he put a note on the wall: "My silver is not buried here." Now, Zhang San's mind was at peace, and he fell asleep. But he was unaware of the fact that his neighbor Wang Er had seen him burying the treasure. At midnight, Wang Er went to dig out the silver. He also thought of a plan not to be suspected. With Zhang San's note, he placed his note, which read, "Your neighbor Wang Er did not steal it." The trader. Once there was a trader who did business at Wu Hu. One day, when he was returning home with the huge profit he had made, he saw a butcher tying up a dog on the river bank. He bought the dog for double his value and took him along with him in his boat. Now the boatman was a bandit earlier. He was lured by the trader's wealth, so he ran the boat among the rushes and drew out his knife. He then wrapped the trader up in a carpet and threw him into the river. The dog saw all this and cried piteously. The dog jumped into the river, grabbed the bundle with his teeth. And did his best to keep the trader above water until they reached a shallow spot. The dog barked continuously and attracted the attention of some people on the bank. The grateful dog. The people took the bundle out of the river and rescued the trader who was still alive. Now the trader wanted to go back to Wu Hu, but the dog was missing. The trader was very unhappy. He searched for the dog but could not find him. After a few days, when he was on the point of returning home, the dog suddenly reappeared. He barked and invited the trader to follow him in a particular direction. The trader followed him until the dog jumped on a boat and grabbed one of the boatmen by the leg. He was the same boatman who had robbed and tried to murder him. He had changed his clothes and also his boat so that none might recognize him. Finally, he was arrested and the whole of the money was found in his boat. Many people in this world would be ashamed after seeing such a grateful dog. The two friends, 
Long ago, there lived in China two friends named Qi Wu and Pao Shu. They were always together and no unkind words passed between them. On a bright beautiful day in spring, Qi Wu and Pao Shu went for a walk together, for they were tired of the city noises. Let us go into the pine forest, said Qi Wu lightly. There we can forget about all our worries and lie on the moss covered ground. Good, said Pao Shu. I am tired and we can rest in the forest. Happily, they passed along the winding road towards the woods looking at the treetops. Now they came to the border of the woods, crossed a little stream and moved towards the trees. For hours they walked, talking and laughing. While they passed through a clatter of bushes, they saw something shining. As they went close, they found a lump of gold. The Golden Nugget See, they both sat together and pointed towards the treasure. Ki Wu bent down and picked up the nugget. It was as large as a lemon and was a little heavy. It is yours, my dear friend, said Ki Wu as he handed over the nugget to Pao Shu. Yours, because you saw it first. No, no, answered Pao Shu. You are wrong, my friend, for you were the first to speak. It is your reward. They joked for some time, each refusing to take the gold and insisted that it belonged to the other. Finally, they dropped the chunk of gold at the very spot where they had first spied it and they went away. Both of them were happy because they loved each other more than anything else in the world. It was not for gold that we left the city, exclaimed Kivu tenderly. No, replied Pao Shu. One day in this forest is worth a thousand nuggets. Let us go and sit down near the spring on the rocks, suggested Kivu. The Stranger At last they reached the spring. They were surprised to see that the place was already occupied by a countryman who lay stretched on the ground. Wake up, fellow, cried Pao Shu. There is money for you close by. Then they described to the stranger the exact place where the treasure was. Eagerly, the stranger rushed in search of the treasure. After some time, they were troubled by the angry voice of the stranger. What trick have you played on me, you two? What do you mean, man? asked Kiwu, astonished. Did you not find the treasure we told you about? No, the stranger said furiously. But in its place was a monster snake which I cut in two with my blade. If you think you could drive me from this place by such a trick, you were mistaken. I was first at this place and you have no right to give me orders. The Surprise Kivu said to the stranger, We thought we were doing you a favor. If you are blind and could not see the treasure, there is no one but yourself to blame. Come, Pao Shu, let us go back and have a look at the snake that is supposedly hiding in a chunk of gold. Laughing and having fun, the two friends left the stranger and went out to look for the nugget. They started walking and quickly crossed the remaining path. Their eyes were fixed on the ground. When they reached the place where they had left the treasure, they were shocked. They saw neither the lump of gold nor the monster snake described by the stranger. Instead, they saw two beautiful golden nuggets, each larger than the one they had seen earlier. Each friend picked one of the nuggets and handed it happily to his companion. Spears and Shields Once, a man was selling spears and shields. He highly boosted of his shields and said, Look at the best shields, see the design and the quality, and look at the shape. No spear on the earth can pierce them. It is the surest protection for your body. Buy it to be a respected warrior. The man kept his shields down and raised one of his spears and shouted, This is the sharpest spear you have ever seen. It is a spear of death. Any shield, no matter how hard it be, can be penetrated by this spear at a single stroke. Everyone started praising the spears and shields, but one of the bystanders came ahead and asked, Tell me, what will happen if I use your spear to strike your shield? The sailor rolled his eyeballs, thought for a moment but couldn't find any good answer. Instead, he went away. Pangu and the Creation of the World In the beginning, there was darkness and chaos. The heavens and the earth were intermingled. Within the darkness was a big crusty egg. 
the egg cracked and the giant penguin came into being. The upper part of the egg floated upwards and formed the sky, and the lower part sank downwards to become the earth. Pangu was pleased, but he was afraid that the heavens and the earth might intermingle again, so he placed himself between them, his head held up high in the sky and his feet firmly upon the earth. Pangu continued to grow, increasing the distance between the heavens and the earth until they were 30,000 miles apart. Now, exhausted, Pangu fell and died. His body made the world and all its elements. His sweat and blood became rivers and Pangu's hair became woods. The giant's body became landscape and mountains, and his breath became wind and clouds. Nu Wu, a fairy, came down to the earth and took some wet clay from the riverbank. She molded little clay figures into the shapes of men and women. She breathed life into them. Far Hien's dream. Far Hien wanted to turn copper into gold. All his experiments had failed badly, but he still believed that one day he would be able to turn copper into gold. He had wasted all his ancestral wealth on his foolish dreams. His wife was very worried. She consulted a friend of her late father. He asked her to bring Far Hien. I would like to pass on a family secret to you. I know how to turn copper into gold, said the old man to Fahin. Fahin was overjoyed. But first, you must bring me the fallen leaves of coconut palms watered from copper vessels, the old man said. This means I will have to grow them myself and it will take a long time, replied Fahin. Yes, it will, but it will be worthwhile, said the old man. Fahin's treasure Far Hien grew a coconut plantation on his ancestral land. The leaves were green and lush on the trees. Now Far Hien had to wait for the leaves to dry. Finally, the leaves dried and started falling off the trees. While Far Hien was busy collecting the fallen leaves, his wife was busy selling the coconuts. She had collected many gold coins. After a few years, Fahien went to the old man and said, I have collected enough leaves. Can we perform the magic now? Ha ha ha, the magic had already been performed, replied the old man. What do you mean? asked Fahien. While you were collecting the fallen leaves, your wife was busy selling the coconut and the coir. And this is all the profit we have made. Saying so, the old man poured all the gold coins Fahien's wife had collected. Favorite of Fortune Long ago, there was a proud king who had a beautiful daughter, but she was a child of ill luck. It was time to get her married. All the suitors assembled before the king's palace. She would throw down a ball of red silk among the suitors, and whoever caught it would be her husband. Now there were many princes and counts who had gathered before the palace. Among them, there was also a beggar. The princess saw dragons crawling into his ears and crawling out again from his nostrils. This means that he was a child of luck. So she threw the ball to the beggar and he caught it. The king asked angrily, Why did you throw the ball into the beggar's hands? He is the fortune's favorite, said the princess. I will marry him and then I will have a share in his good luck. Living in Hardship the king could not tolerate this, but the princess insisted. Angrily, he drove her out of the palace. So the princess had to leave the palace with the beggar. She had to live in a small hut with the beggar and search for herbs and roasts, which she had to cook herself. At times, they had nothing to eat and had to sleep hungry. One day, the beggar said to her, I will go out and seek my fortune, and when I have found it, I will come back again and take you along with me. The princess agreed, and he went away, and had gone for eighteen years. In the meantime, the princess lived poorly and in hardship. Her father remained cruel and hard-hearted. It was her mother who gave her food and money secretly, else the princess would have died of starvation. The Emperor Through the years, the beggar found his fortune and became the emperor. He returned and came to meet his wife. She did not recognize him. She only knew that he was the powerful emperor. The emperor asked her how she was getting along. 
Why do you ask me how am I getting along? She replied. I am too far beneath your notice, the emperor asked her. And who is your husband? My husband was a beggar. He went away to seek his fortune. That was 18 years ago and he has not yet returned. When the emperor asked her what she had been doing all these years, she said that she waited for him to return. Then the emperor asked her, do you wish to marry someone else as he had been missing for such a long time? She refused and wanted to wait for her husband. The Child of Ill Luck When the emperor saw how faithful his wife was, he revealed the truth and told her who he was. He gave her beautiful clothes and took her to the palace with him. Now they lived in a luxury and happiness. After a few days, the emperor said to his wife, We enjoy and have fun every day, as if every day is a festival. The wife smiled and said that it was right to celebrate each day as they were now the emperor and the empress. Still, she was a child of ill luck. Just 18 days passed after she had become the empress. She felt sick and died. However, her husband, who was the favorite of the fortune, lived for many years. The Heroines Once upon a time, two heroines had built their nest on the roof of a temple at Tienstein. For long years, dust had accumulated in the shrine within which lived a huge serpent. Whenever the young ones of the Herons were ready to fly, the serpent would creep towards the nest and swallow every one of them. This made the Herons very sad. It happened for three years and now people believe that the Herons would no longer build their nest there. Nevertheless, the following year they came again. When it was almost time for the young ones to take wing, they flew away. The Herons returned after three days and went straight to the nest to feed the young ones. At that very moment, the serpent crawled up to reach its prey. As soon as he neared the nest, the parents' bird flew out and screamed loudly in mid The Rock At once, there was a great flapping of wings and darkness spread all over. The crowd gathered were astonished and alleged that a huge bird, the Rock, obscured the light of the sun. The bird swooped down with the speed of wind or falling rain and striking the serpent with its talons, tore his head off at a blow. But at the same time, several feet of the stonework of the temple also broke down. The rock then flew away. Many herons also accompanied it as it flew away, as though escorting a guest. The nest also broke and fell down. One of the young birds died due to the fall. The other was taken up by the priests and put in the bell tower. There, the old birds returned to feed it until thoroughly fledged. Then, it spread its wings and flew away. A Spirit of the Wu Lian Mountain Once, there lived a scholar at the foot of Wu Lian Mountain. One night, he was sitting up reading outside his home. Suddenly, there was a huge storm and a monster stretched out his claws and seized him by the hair. The monster lifted him up in the air and carried him away. When they were passing by a Buddhist temple in the hills, the scholar saw the figure of a god in golden armor at a distance in the clouds. The figure in the clouds looked like the image of Vito in the Buddhist temple. In its right hand, it held an iron mace, while its left hand pointed towards the monster. Angry, scared, the priest came and saw the scholar on his star. He piled up hay and straw on the ground so that he might jump down unhurt. Then he took the scholar home. The Fool of the Family a rich Chinese lady had a foolish son. One day, the son had to go to meet his future bride's parents. So, his mother told him what to say. She did not want them to know how foolish he was. He was to carry a costly fan with some landscape painted on it. She taught him how to answer about the painting by replying, Oh, that's just a fancy sketch. If they asked him about the mule on which he would ride, he should say, the animal is a good beast of burden, reared on our farm. 
the young man reached the future bride's home. At the door, his would-be mother-in-law asked about the health of his mother. He said, the animal is a good beast of burden, reared on our farm. The mother-in-law was shocked. I was told that you belonged to a decent family. The fool thought that he should have given the first answer that his mother had taught him. Two Peaches Killed Three Generals In Key, there were three fearless generals, but they were also arrogant and unruly. Once, they came across the Prime Minister and disrespected him. Annoyed, the Prime Minister went to the King of Key and told him about the behavior of the generals. The King remarked, it is not so easy to deal with them especially when they three are together. The Prime Minister thought for a moment and then said, Well, send two peaches to them. They are to be awarded to the two who deserve them the most. The plan was carried out accordingly. Each insisted to have a peach and started arguing fiercely. The two who were nearer to the peaches got one each. The third general was enraged and killed them with a sword. When he came to his senses, he felt ashamed that he had killed his friends for two peaches. And the very next moment, he dug his sword in his chest. Revenge on the East Sea Once upon a time, Emperor Yan had a beautiful and lovely daughter named Nuwa. She was a strong-willed girl. Nuwa loved swimming and often went to the East Sea, playing with the blue waves. She enjoyed being close to nature, but one day, while swimming, she was drowned. Her soul, however, would not give in and it broke through the water and became a Jinwai bird. The bird had white black spots on her head, a grey beak and red claws. She now wanted to take revenge. Every day, she picked up pebbles and sticks from the western mountains and dropped them into the East Sea. She was determined to fill up the sea with pebbles so it might no longer be capable of drowning others. Summer or winter, spring or autumn, she never stopped and kept working. Legend has it that she is continuing her task till date. The Emperor and the Giant One day, the Celestial Emperor was sitting upon his throne. Suddenly, the guard entered. The Emperor asked him what happened. He told the emperor that the palace had been attacked by a huge giant. The emperor immediately seized his imperial sword and rushed outside. On the palace gate stood a huge giant carrying a shield and attacking the guards with his axe. Stop! shouted the celestial emperor. Who are you and what are you doing here? My name is Punish Heaven and I have come to challenge you and contest your throne because you are not a good ruler. So the Celestial Emperor and Punish Heaven fought for a long time. Finally, they had fought their way down to the earth. At last, with a strong blow, the Celestial Emperor cut off Punish Heaven's head. His head fell to the ground with a thundering sound. Without a head, even though his head was cut off, yet Punish Heaven did not die. Instead, he began searching for his head as he searched. He smashed trees and boulders and caused great destruction. Now the Celestial Emperor feared that Punish Heaven would attack him if he found his head and put it back on his shoulders. So the Emperor took his sword and sliced open Mount Chang Wang. He then threw the giant's head into it and closed it up again. Unexpectedly, Punish Heaven stopped looking for his head and he held his shield and axe again. The giant reached the palace. The emperor was horrified to see him as his teeth seemed to turn into eyes and his navel seemed to become a mouth. His face moved onto his trunk and he attacked more brutally than ever. The emperor was scared and fled back to his palace. It is believed that that to this day, Punish Heaven is causing destruction in the world. The Magic Boat Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Chang, a name which means honest. He lived with his mother and a white cat. Every day, he used to go to the forest and cut firewood for his mother. One day, while he was chopping the wood, he saw an old man 
falling from a single log bridge into the river. Chang rushed to save the old man. The old man was impressed with Chang's bravery and unselfishness and gave him a small dragon boat. Then the old man said, Grow bigger, grow bigger. Suddenly, the small boat turned into a large boat. When he said, Grow smaller, grow smaller, the boat became a toy. The old man left Chang with the toy boat and told him, Whenever you need help, look at the east and call, Grandfather, Grandfather. Then the old man disappeared. The Rain Now came the rainy season. It rained continuously for 10 days and 10 nights. The water began to rise. Chang took out his boat and he uttered the magic words told by the old man. It turned into a big boat that he, his mother and the cat could board. As they sailed on the rising waters, they found an ant, a bee and a crane that were being drowned. Chang saved each of them. After a few hours, they came across a man who was struggling in the water. They saved him as well. The man's name was Ying, which means tricky. Once aboard the boat, he refused to help others. He stretched out on the deck and started giving orders to the others. When the rain stopped and the water level started decreasing, Chang returned to his village and said the magic words. The boat changed into a toy. Ying saw this and wanted this magic boat. The Search Chang's house had been destroyed in the flood. He started rebuilding his house. His mother, the cat and the other animals helped Chang. Ying suggested Chang you should give the magic boat to the emperor. The emperor will give you a lot of money for it. You can use that money to rebuild your house. Chang trusted Ying and gave the magic boat to him to give it to the emperor. Time passed and Ying did not return. Chang went in search for Ying and the boat. He searched for him for many days. One day he heard a large procession coming and it was announced that the Prime Minister was approaching. The Prime Minister was none other than Ying. Chang was furious at Ying for stealing his boat and Ying was fearful of Chang. Because he knew that he had cheated Chang, Ying got Chang arrested. The Wish Chang did not return home for many days. The animals were worried for him and went searching for him. They found him hungry, dirty and injured. They decided to tell the truth to the emperor. It was announced that the emperor's daughter was ill and anyone who could cure her would be granted one wish. Chang disguised himself as a doctor and went to the palace. He went and sat near Ying. Chang cured the emperor's daughter. The emperor was very happy and asked Chang his wish. His wish was the return of his magic boat. The emperor said to Chang, Prove that the boat was yours. Chang looked towards the east and called out, Grandfather, Grandfather. The old man appeared, riding a golden phoenix. He told the emperor that he had given the boat to Chang. Then the old man turned Ying into an old grey wolf and the emperor into a big wild pig. Chang got his boat and returned home with his friends. Kong gave away bigger pairs. In the Eastern Han Dynasty, there was a person named Kong Rong. He was smart and good-tempered. He had five older brothers and one younger brother. When he was a child, one day, his father bought some pears. He picked the bigger pear and gave it to Kong Rong deliberately. But Kong Rong refused to take it and picked up the smaller one. His father was very curious and asked, Why? Kong Rong said, I am younger so I should eat the smaller pear and my brother should eat the bigger ones. His father was very glad and praised him. He asked further, What about your younger brother who is younger than you are? Kong Rong said, I am older than he, so I should leave the smallest one for my little brother. Kong Rong became a great scholar when he grew up. The Boat and the Sword Once upon a time, in the state of Jin, a man was crossing a river in his boat. It was the season of flood and his boat tossed wildly. With a loud splash, he fell into the river. He lost his sword in the river. Somehow, he managed to pull himself up 
and was back on the boat. His boat tossed and whirled its way along the river, and he reached his village. But he could not forget about his sword. At least the storm brought me home, thought the man from Jin. After a few days, he went back and searched for his sword. Much to his surprise, his sword had disappeared. He rushed to see the wise woman in the village. Ah, she nodded. The river dragon thought you had brought a gift for him. He took your sword and landed you safely ashore. Ah, thought the man from the state of Jin. That makes sense. The stone cutter's wishes. Long, long ago in China, on one hot summer day, a stone cutter worked hard swinging his hammer under the blazing sun. While he was wiping his sweat, he thought, "For sure, the sun is the most powerful being in the world." Oh, I wish I could be the sun. Surprisingly, a fairy heard his wish, and the stone cutter became the sun. Without any delay. He began sending hot rays down to the land. Suddenly, a cloud came floating in front of him, and his light grew dim. How could that be? A cloud is mightier than I, he thought. Now, he wanted to be a white, fluffy cloud. This wish was also granted, and he became a cloud. Now, he was happy to float through the blue Chinese sky. Then, blew the wind. It fluttered and whirled around him. If I can't have my peace, then I'd rather blow free," he said angrily. "I want to be a violent wind." The unsatisfied stone cutter. The fairy again listened to him and granted his wish. Now he twisted and twirled. He blew here and there until he blew against a rock that stood in his way. He blew as hard as he could, but the stone remained unmoved. If I were a stone, he thought, no one would trouble me. A stone is the best thing in the world. Now the fairy turned him into a big, heavy rock. He sat unmoved and watched time go by. But one day, a group of stone cutters came there. They battered at him, just doing their job. Please, fairy, help me, he begged. Being a stone is not what I want, after all. From now on, I want to be no one else but only me. The fairy fulfilled his wish for the last time. He picked up his hammer and went back to work under the blazing sun. Respect everyone. One day, Chinese philosopher Confucius took his carriage and went out on a journey to give publicity to his theories. He saw a child in the middle of the road and asked the driver to immediately stop. Confucius said to the child. Would you please give way to my carriage? The child pointed to the road and said, "Can't you see a castle there?" Confucius looked in the direction and saw a small mud castle. The child further said, "Carriages move around castles. Castles never give way to the traffic." Confucius admired the child and said, "You are so young, and even then you know so much." The child raised his head and said. I heard fish can swim as soon as they are born. Age doesn't make a difference. Hearing this, Confucius said, "Oh, youngsters today are really remarkable." Confucius asked the carriage driver to bypass the child's castle. It means that even a child should be regarded with respect. Obsession with dragons. Once upon a time, a man was obsessed with dragons. He admired their shapes and the way they looked. When he looked at the pictures of dragons breathing fire through their mouths and killing all their enemies, he would get excited. His obsession with dragons reached such a limit that he remembered every story that mentioned dragons. Even at his home, he had gigantic dragons painted all over the walls and ceiling. His house looked like a temple dedicated to dragons, with two green dragons breathing fire. One night, something strange happened. A dragon burst through one of the windows of his house and started breathing fire all over the place. Scared, the man started screaming and ran away. This Chinese fable teaches us to love concrete realities instead of the ones we create in our minds. 
the three monks. On the high mountain in a small temple lived a young monk. Every day he drew two buckets of water for drinking with a shoulder pool. Later a thin monk came. The thin monk thought it unfair to draw water alone, so the two fetched water together in one bucket. The bucket was placed in the middle of the shoulder pool. They still had enough water for both of them to drink. Then a fat monk came. The two monks asked him to fetch water. He carried a bucket of water and drank it up. From then on nobody was willing to fetch water. So they had no water. They began to suffer from thirst. That night the temple caught fire. The three monks finally forgot their selfishness and together put out the fire. From then onwards they helped one another and the temple never lacked water. Grow seedling by pulling in ancient China, there lived a farmer who grew a stretch of crops. Every day he went to the field to look at his seedlings grow. One day he finally saw the young shoots in the field. He was impatient and wanted them to grow faster so that he might harvest the next day. One morning he came up with a smart idea to help the young plants grow faster. He began working. He started pulling up the young plants one by one by half an inch. When he finished pulling, he was very happy. He said to himself, Look, look, how much taller the shoots have grown. He went home and proudly said to his son what he had done. His son was shocked. He went to the field and was heartbroken to see all the plants dying. The story demonstrates ruining something by disregarding its natural course. Thus, this Chinese idiom tells us not to spoil things by being over enthusiastic. Thanks for watching. Do like, share, subscribe to Sahil Book House.